Hey there, it's Professor S. For the next five minutes or so, I want to introduce to you a very important group of organic macromolecules called proteins. Now, normally when I introduce organic molecules, I start with their chemistry and their structure. But with proteins, I want to start with their cellular functions. And it's not a short list. Let's see, there are enzymes, proteins that act as catalysts, and they are by far the most abundant catalysts used in cells. Uh, there are transport proteins, but that actually covers a lot of ground because there are proteins that transport substances into and out of cells through a lot of different mechanisms. But then in multicellular organisms like humans, there are proteins that transport substances around the body. Uh, signaling systems. Uh, in future videos, I'll talk about how cellular signaling works, but the essence of it is signal molecule interacts with receptor. The receptor is always a protein. Sometimes the signal molecule is too. Uh, so that's three, motor proteins. Uh, but these are proteins that produce movement, but again, it's not one dimensional. It could be about moving the cell around its environment. It could be moving a part of the cell. It could be about moving something around within the cell. Uh, and then we have storage proteins, proteins that store molecules, sometimes toxic, sometimes molecules that are hard to store through other mechanisms. They're defensive proteins. These are proteins like antibodies, which many people have heard of, but there are actually quite a few other types of defensive pro uh, proteins in immune systems. And then finally, structural proteins, proteins that form the building blocks of a cell, like within the cytoskeleton, but then many multicellular organisms have tissues and organs where the ultrastructure is protein-based. That's not a short list of functions. And, and that's kind of the idea here. Most other organic molecules, I'm inclined to start with their chemistry and structure because they're fairly homogenous and their list of functions is therefore fairly short. Whereas with proteins, they have a huge list of functions and the only way we can get there is with complexity of structure. So protein structure begins with the fact that proteins are polymers of a monomer called the amino acid. Let's go take a look at an amino acid. Amino acid structure begins with this carbon. At the core of every amino acid is a central carbon, and carbon, you should recall, can form four covalent bonds. The first of those four bonds is with an amino group, an amino group which is alkaline and hydrophilic. Directly opposite that amino group is a carboxyl group, which is acidic and hydrophilic. But that means a couple things. That means every amino acid is both a weak acid and a weak base at the same time, depending on environmental conditions. But we also now have its name, right? We have a central carbon with an alkaline amino group on one side and directly opposite an acidic carboxyl group or an amino acid, see? In the third position, we have a hydrogen atom. And in the fourth position, we have R, which if you know your periodic table even a little, you know there's no R in the periodic table. R is a placeholder. It's what we call a side chain. See, there are 20 different amino acids used to build proteins, and all 20 of them have an amino group opposite a carboxyl around a carbon and a hydrogen opposite something else, the side chain. And each of the 20 has a different side chain component. Um, let's throw that amino acid to the upper left-hand corner of your screen, and we'll take a quick look at a couple possible side chains. So, I'm just going to add a few ball and stick amino acids here just to illustrate. Um, the side chain could be as simple as a hydrogen atom. It could also be a carboxyl group making the side chain acidic. Or it could have an amino group making it alkaline. Or it could have a benzene ring or a sulfhydryl group or methyl groups or hydroxyl groups. Each of the 20 amino acids has a different side chain and so therefore different chemistry and that's going to be really important down the line in understanding how proteins are held together. Now, with that said, I want to make one last comment in this video and then I'll move on to more on amino acids in another video. Proteins are polymers of amino acids. Amino acids have a hydrophilic amino group and a hydrophilic uh, carboxyl group in them. Therefore, amino acids and by extension proteins are predominantly hydrophilic polymers. And that's your introduction to proteins. I'll see you in the next video for more on amino acids and peptide bonding.
I, I know we're gonna, we're gonna get this one first. Hey, feeling it good. You ready? Okay, here we go. Hey, this is Professor S. And if you enjoyed that video, here's a couple others you may find useful. And uh, don't forget, hit the button to subscribe so you don't miss anything that I post as it comes out. What are you laughing about? That was a good take. We may have to redo that take. Redo it? Why? Because you laughing? No, your fly was down the entire take.